Christoph, it's great seeing you again. We're at a conference on the physics of information. Uh, some of the guys here, really, and girls, uh, believe that information is not just a way of describing reality. It is the fundamental element of reality and the things that we see, whether it's quantum mechanics or whether it's uh, consciousness or whatever it is, are, are built up from information that is the fundamental thing at the, at the, at the, at, at the, as the ground of being. Uh, you've dealt with information, particularly in trying to explain consciousness, but do you see information as, as something that is fundamental to the structure of everything? It is fundamental to the structure of everything. I'm not saying information came before space, time, energy, and mass, but in order to explain consciousness, which is part and parcel of the universe, we need, uh, we need information theory. And ultimately, my only experience, this is the, 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 the heart of the most famous deduction in Western thought, cogito ergo sum, right? the, the only way I experience the universe, I don't know about gravity and, and galaxies, all of that I have to infer. The one thing I'm, I'm utterly certain of is, I, is I'm conscious. Same thing as you are conscious of your, of your own existence. And that, that, ex, that needs to be explained by sort of, uh, some sort of intrinsic information. Uh, uh, intrinsic information principles such as integrated information. So that says that in some sense it is fundamental. My only reality is what I, is my lived reality. It's my only reality I've directly access to. And that, so the theory says, is generated by integrated information, in this case associated with my particular brain. It is my only reality. It is the quality of experience. It is, it is sort of the light inside my head. It is the sound inside my skull. That is ultimately it's all, it's all created by integrated information that's created by this complex brain that's evolved over you know, several billion years of, ev of, of evolution. So you need an external world that's given by physics and, and matter and space and time, but then you also need sort of information uh, uh, that, uh, that gives rise to, to experience. And experience, once again, is the only way I or anybody else knows about the world. But does that mean information is a way of describing what you see, or is information what sits below everything that you see and, and gives rise to everything. It's a big difference. It is not just used to describe uh, reality. I think it is, an, it is an irreducible aspect. It's an, it's, a, it's an imminent, it's an intrinsic aspect. So in order to fully describe the universe, I, I pause it, you need space, time, energy, mass, and you need that, that Organized matter gives rise or it's associated with integrated information. That is what we call experience. It's a part and parcel of the world. It doesn't emerge. It is fundamentally there. It's just as fundamental as charge is a fundamental property of certain elementary particles like an electron. Uh, and, and, and so what is it? Because with, 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 with the spin of an electron, we know what that is. You're saying it is integrated information. No, 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 no. The spin of an electron, we know how to manipulate. Uh, ultimately, it's a mathematical relationship, right, that we have in, for example, in, in, in Coulomb's law or something, right? You can do a certain operation and you get a certain set of numbers. One of the numbers is charge. It can be positive or negative or zero, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with integrated. Ultimately, integrated re, uh, information is a relationship among elements within a system. It's a view of the system viewed from within within. So, so ultimately, it's, it's sort of, if you want, it's a mathematical relationship. It's mathematics in some sense. So you can sort of take a platonic view on this and say, ultimately, it's the mathematical reality that gives rise to, 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 to ex experience. And, you, and the, 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 the technical calculus that you use to do that is, an, uh, is a variant of information theory. Yeah, but that, that's a big difference than saying what some physicists say, that information, uh, an on-off, uh, zero, one, is, is, the, is the fundamental aspect of, of reality. You're using information theory as a way of describing a process of, of what happens when, when uh, uh, a complex series of interconnections work together in complex systems. You're using information theory to describe that. Very different than saying information is the basis of reality. This depends on what take you have on this. I'm saying that ultimately my, rea my lived reality, not the one I infer, which is involved in physics. The, my, the one I live right now, I have an experience, I see you, you just ask me a question, I hear your voice inside my head, right? I have this movie inside my, mm. inside my head that, that, that mm. shows you. That experience is integrated information. It's just the same, it's an identity relationship. Integrated information is my experience, my experience is integrated information. So that's fundamental to conscious experience, which is a fundamental aspect of reality. So in that sense, it, it doesn't predate physics, but it's part of physics. Mm.
And, and how does how is integrated information different than the the pineal gland is the seat of consciousness? Because it's integrated. So so the way the theory is formulated, it starts from my phenomenal experience. I have certain experience. Consciousness exists. It's unitary. You only have one experience at any given point in time. It's integrated. It's one out of a gazillion possible. Um, uh, different types of integrated information from, the, from those sort of axiomatic phenomenological experiences you derive a particular theory. Now you can, you can ask why that particular theory? That's very similar to asking why quantum mechanics? We know quantum mechanics is the best theory we have for describing the universe. Now you can ask and people have asked why quantum mechanics? Can you imagine a universe where quantum, the laws of quantum mechanics do not hold? Mm. Yes, you can imagine, but for whatever reasons we don't know right now, we live in a universe where quantum mechanics hold. Same thing, we live in a universe where integrated information gives rise to, to, to consciousness. Unlike pineal gland, it gives rise to a whole set of, of, of predictions. And of course, there are many organisms that don't have a pineal gland. For example, you know, squid doesn't have a pineal gland, right? Invertebrates don't have a pineal gland. Birds don't have them, or, or computers don't have them. Yet this theory can predict which of these systems has and has not consciousness. So in that sense, it's much richer.